Okay, you got a record light? Yeah, I do. All right. <clears throat> Here we go. Paradox of Sports, episode 40. Uh, before we get too deep, we'll take care of some business. As you can see, I found my glasses. So all is better there. Uh, I don't look as old that you can't see all the uh, wrinkles under my eyes. Jack, what's up? Do you guys get some snow down there? A little. Or a little means a lot. So, yeah. Nice. So not nothing too crazy, but not like they got north of you guys. No, we got like sh snow and a little bit of rain. We had like really heavy snow. Has it messed up your baseball? Did you have to miss a baseball practice? Uh, Yeah, on, on yesterday because they thought it'd be too muddy. Yeah, though I bet the fields probably would have been a mess. So that would have probably definitely been a mess. So we were just talking before we came on air that there was uh, there's some talk on the Twitter world that maybe Deshaun Watson is leaning towards Denver or San Francisco. Now, whether either of those teams are leaning towards him, we'll have to wait and see. But what is your initial reaction to perhaps Deshaun Watson being a Bronco? That would be a really good idea because Deshaun Watson's one, one of the best. He's pretty much almost as magical as Patrick Mahomes. Not all the way, but he evades those sacks like he's evading. I don't know how to say that, but but Deshaun Watson in a, with the Broncos would be a real would be really good. Now. As a fan, you, you're speaking as as fan fan Jack. Mm -hmm. Now put yourself in Deshaun Watson's shoes. Our offense is terrible. Our offensive coordinator is terrible. Fangio is terrible. Would you risk? I mean, between Kyle Shanahan, who is, I mean, he's an offensive badass, or to come. I don't. I don't even know. I'll be right now. For the life of me, I couldn't even tell you who Denver's offensive coordinator is. Who's the Broncos? Yeah, he, he, exactly. So, I I don't know, man. If I'm Deshaun Watson, I'm looking hard at San Francisco. Now, your taxes, you know, you got to look into the business of what taxes are and stuff. But, I mean, if Denver gets him, I hope they don't waste him because it's going to be pitiful and hard to watch if we get one of these generational talent young men into Denver and we just run the ball and then go three and out for, you know, two years. Mm -hmm. First off, I'm, yeah, I'm trying to edit the clock so that, um, cause it's still, cause on the, on the clock on the computer, it says 617. Oh, so I'm you need to, to bump figure, her up. You need to I'm bump her up. I'm trying to figure out how to edit that. Edit okay. settings. Let's go. Um, while you do that, I'm going to look up and see who our dang offensive coordinator is. Here. Okay. That's ridiculous. I don't know that. So hold up. And it's even more ridiculous knowing that I don't know that either. Yeah, I actually am a little shocked. Okay, so not. There. Yeah, it's Pat. It's Pat Shermer. Oh, yeah. He was once the Giants head coach. Yeah, and he sucked at that, so they got rid of him. So, okay. I don't know. Maybe Deshaun – I don't know. I think maybe they get enamored with because of Elway still, and it's probably pretty cool to be in the same room as John Elway. But I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. Has there been anything free agency-wise here kind of in this – period you know before the big stuff i think the actual the, the league season will start on saint patrick's day wednesday tomorrow we're filming this tuesday night so we'll catch up on all the big stuff next week but in this what they call the tampering period has there been anything that's kind of caught you off guard or anything you've liked the last couple of days there have been so many signings and then many of them have been with the patriots bill belichick spending his money on good players like he just got his stimulus bill and big big stimulus check too, like 137 million or something he spent in the first 24 hours or so it's some insane amount of number that the Patriots so along those lines where do you stand on is it gonna bother you 
if the Patriots like, is it going to bother you if the Patriots are awesome next year? Uh, not really. All they need is a Brent farted. All they need is like a good running, another good running back. Yeah. That could like play receiver. Like just bring Andre Ellington back. He was actually really good. Do they not have him? I'll have to look. Do they not have him under contract? Is he gone? I don't know. I think he retired. They oh, well, use, then, yeah. Like, well, then he's done. Then he's definitely gone. All right. They got to use like, um, uh, they got to use like an, like a really speedy receiver. And I know exactly where to find one. Where's that? Well, in the SEC, but where else? Uh, the University of Purdue with this guy named Rondale Moore. Okay. Yeah, that's the other thing you're going to see the Patriots do is they got – I think they're sitting pretty well in the draft too, so I don't know if they're going to yeah, try to go after a quarterback. Pick. Okay, I don't know if they'll get a quarterback or if they'll wait and they're, get one later. Or, I mean, they re-signed Cam, one. but get one, in the later, get one in the later rounds. Yeah, they'll probably shoot for like Micah Parsons. But there's – all in the second-round pick, uh, Rondell Moore could be really good because the the receivers with um the Patriots they're basically because I watched this TikTok the other day it was like how Bill Belichick scouts his players and there was this guy who was saying who was recommending like a guy who was running a four two two out of Bama. And he yeah. said that's a bit too fast for my system. And then he bought up this guy that was five foot eight and ran a four seventy five, and they signed him. There you go. Yeah, that's I mean, basically maybe, how they do it. Maybe you can be. Maybe you can be too fast for Belichick's deal. I don't know. Mm -hmm. So okay, well we got. Go ahead. The scouting combine really screwed everything up, especially with the likes of the fast players such as Rondale Moore, a lot of those guys. Because I bet, um, I bet that Rondell Moore could run under a four thirty, could run sub four thirty five, if the com, if the combine was there, probably even four thirty. Nice. Okay. Well, we're gonna get into the NCAA tournament starts Thursday, so the eighteenth. We're gonna get into our brackets, but before we do that. Let's go ahead and uh, let's knock the interview out. Another another one executive producer and yourself did. So if you want, go ahead and uh, let the folks know who we got tonight. All right. Introducing former Super Bowl 50 champion, former Broncos offensive guard for Texas Tech alum, Louis Vasquez. Barrel Brothers is ready for ice cold beer season. Temperature in the beer cave, ice cold perfect. Drive through, ready. We've even added more cooler space. Have over 100 craft beer choices. Yeah, it's like that. And Barrel Brothers customer service. It's just like that. Ice cold beer cave, all the right choices and friendly people. It's gotta be Barrel Brothers. Now that's a cold beer. What got you into football? Uh, you know, growing up here in Texas, uh, football's kind of king. So, um, you know, when I was growing up, I wanted to play sports. And, uh, you know, uh, this was back when the Cowboys were in the dynasty days, winning those three Super Bowls and, you know, those four or five years, however long they did it. Um, so, and growing up not far from Dallas, I uh, – you know, it took a hold to the Cowboys, and obviously they were winning games. And uh, I remember seeing uh, Larry Allen on that Great Wall of Dallas. And, you know, because at that point I knew I was a heftier kid, so I knew it was going to be an offensive line. Um, so I took an admiration of Larry Allen and the way he played, his tenacity. And um, even to this day, I watch some of his highlights, and I'm like, Dude, that dude was just a different beast. So, um, knowing at that at that age, I knew I would have it would have been an ultimate dream of mine to play football. Um, so that ultimately got me interested in football, got me into it. Now, did I think I would ever play professional football at that age? Not one chance. But it was fun. 
Uh, I liked what it was about, and it taught me so much off the field as well, not just, uh, you know, on the field. He taught me a lot of things and, uh, and how to be a man, how to carry myself. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it, it's a sport that has um, – it teaches men – it teaches boys how to be men later on down the road. And, uh, that's football that uh, I absolutely enjoy, especially at this point in my, my life. Talk about your high school career. Did you play any other sports? No. Uh, of course, Canada High School, we're, uh, we're a small town. We're probably pushing 24,000 people. Um, so we were, at that point, we were 4A school, um, which was the second largest uh, school there. Now Texas has 6A. Um, so imagine that. But we were 4A. Uh, we had a pretty... Uh, we had a long history of being well known for our football program. So, you know, just knowing that I was proud to be, of course, kind of tiger. Uh, that was our mascot. We were tigers. And, um, you know, a lot of the guys that I played with, I've grown up with since elementary school. So uh, we have that long history and it just helps with the continuity of the team. Uh, but, uh, yeah, we were predominantly a, a football school. We took great pride in it. And, uh, um, you know, that's that was the only place that I stayed uh, and played until uh, I left, of course, Canada to go to Lubbock and play at Texas Tech. Why did you choose to go to Texas Tech? Uh, you know, um, oddly enough, I almost chose LSU to go to uh, – the first offer I, fish, I ever officially received was from Oklahoma State. And at that time, Les Miles, who is currently – or he was the LSU head coach. Um, he was the head coach at Oklahoma State at that point in time, and he offered me my first job or my first offer. Um, for the coach's advice, they said, wait, there'll be more to come. So I did. And uh, surely enough, um, as I'm going to visit Texas Tech for my official visit, Les Miles had just uh, accepted the job, the head job over at LSU, and Coach Mallory, his right-hand man, called me and said, I know you verbally committed to Texas Tech, but if you want to keep your options open, you have a full ride scholarship to LSU. Now, at that point, I wanted to stay in the state of Texas to play football. Texas A&M never really grasped my attention uh, University of Texas, I wanted to go there until I found out later that the coaches were kind of lying to me and just kind of selling the dream. So last school there was Texas Tech. So um, at that point, Texas Tech in Lubbock was further away from my hometown than LSU was. So uh, I was in a little bit of a dilemma. You know, do I do I play closer to home but play out of state or do I play in state and you know being further from home um, and all it really took was that one official visit I got a chance to meet the coaches other players and uh, kind of fell in love with the culture the vibe the continuity of the team and at that point I knew I was coming to Texas Tech that and they were upcoming program. Um, we were getting ready to do some great things, and I wanted to be a part of that. Um, so, um, yeah, that was uh, that was those were the main reasons of me choosing uh, Texas Tech over any other school that it offered me. What were your favorite places in Lubbock to hang out? <laughs> uh, man, uh, Lubbock being Lubbock, there wasn't really many uh, places. Uh, a lot of the places we would hang out, though, involved food. So um, Spanky's was one of them right across from our uh, facilities. Oh, yeah, uh, Spanky's. Love that fried cheese. <laughs> exactly. <Yeah>. Spanky's <laughs> is always a, a, a very popular hit between, uh, with us. Um, Chili's ended up coming later. Chili's is now right across the street from our training facilities, so it was always easy to – especially when we just got our stipend check, you know, go get a workout in and walk across the street to go to Chili's. Um, and what, what, where else was there? Did we you did ever like, hit up Jarvski's? You know, I don't, it doesn't ring a bell. 
So, um, yeah, my wife was the manager and waitress there for years during her college days. So that, that oh, was, you again? know, it, guard skis. It, it was guard like an old Victorian style building restaurant. Okay. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not too familiar with that. Coach Leach used to hang out there night before, night before uh, games to get his head right. So, <laughs> uh, of course he was. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yeah, but for the most part, our hangout spots had to evolve with food, some type of restaurants. Um, and then, of course, obviously, we uh, Chimmy's was a, a very popular place as well. Yeah. So, um, you know, the food and then, uh, you know, the, uh, the college atmosphere that, uh, you know, uh, that they had. Oh, you hit your mute button. <laughs> There we but, go. Uh, I'm sorry. I said you hit your mute button, but you got her fixed. Uh, sorry. I had, had a call trying to come through. Apologize. Yeah. That's one beautiful thing about this show. We 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 keep it real. You know, it's it's not about the flash. It's you know, real life. So. Right. And Jack, dude, speak up when you uh, ask your questions because you're not coming on camera. Okay, got it. Um. You currently hold the bench press record at the combine doing 39 reps. When did you realize this? Sorry. Pardon me one second. All right. Ha have it, having some technical difficulties right quick, but we'll keep it here. I got you. There we go. Jack, speak up, All dude. Right. You're not getting on camera. Okay. Go ahead. You currently hold the bench press record at the combine doing 39 reps. When did you realize this? <laughs> uh, I, I did at the time. I don't anymore. I think uh, two years after I left the combine, there was another kid out there that came and did 43. Um, but wow. It wasn't until after the end of the combine that uh, rumors were circulating that I did the most out of anybody uh, that year. So, uh, you know, it was relatively quick and I wasn't really sure how impressed to be about it uh, just because, you know, the NFL is so much more than just weightlifting. So um, although I was proud of myself for it, I didn't know how much water that truly held. So I didn't get overly excited about it, you know, because I, I knew that there was a, a bigger job at hand to take care of than just uh, the most bench press uh, bench presses I can do. You were drafted by the Chargers in the 2009 NFL draft. Talk about your start in the NFL. So when I came in, uh, San Diego had just brought in a nine-year vet in front you, your mic's muted. He's probably getting another call, so he'll buzz out and get us back in. Sorry, guys. I got my contractors calling me and trying to get in the building. I'm almost there. Um, but anyways, yeah, the... Uh, um, so when I came in, the coach said that, uh, it was me and the nine year vet Keenan Horney battling for position. Um, and throughout the course of training camp, I ended up winning the job and they cut the nine year vet that was behind me. Um, so at that point, the coach goes, you're all we got. You can't, we can't afford, you can't afford to get hurt this year. And now you're talking about a, uh, a gut wrenching moment, like, oh crap. Uh, all right, well, I guess it's go time. So, um, yeah, it was a very long but very fast first rookie year playing in the NFL. And uh, Phillip Rivers just signed his $97 million contract extension. So, needless to say, I had quite of uh, pressure on my back to get uh, to protect uh, Phillip Rivers. You later signed with the Broncos and appeared in two Super Bowls, winning Super Bowl 50. How was your time there?
Oh, we froze. You know, we had trouble filling seats. Denver, not once did we ever have trouble filling seats. Um, Broncos fans are very loyal. Sorry. Very loyal, very attentive, and they are ride or die, truly. So um, I really enjoyed them. And uh, they, uh, yeah, they still treat me well to this day. So I will always forever have a special place in my heart for Denver. What do you do now in your free time? What free um, time? <laughs> yeah. um, now I am uh, currently opening up a new business. Um, it's a wellness and performance center. Um, so I'm doing that as well as raising two little boys. So I'm just trying to raise two boys right now. It's a full-time job in itself. And then trying to add, uh, you know, full-time business is uh, time is very short to, for just for myself, just to get a shower in. So um, very busy, very, very busy juggling uh, just those, those things. Who was your favorite player of all time? You know, uh, if we're talking football, Larry Allen was probably my favorite. Larry Allen, like I said, was just a, a, a monster. And, uh, you know, he uh, never got bored with little things either. Um, he always uh, just managed to, to amaze me with the things he was able to do as big as he was and, Listening to Demarcus Ware at one point in time when he was there with Larry, he's Demarcus, one of the greats, said that he's never been punched so hard in his life until he went up against Larry Allen. So, um, you know, that just kind of confirmed everything I had already knew or thought about Larry. Who is your favorite? Say that again. Sorry, I lost you. One more time. Who was your favorite to block against? To block. Uh, you know, it's a good question. One of the favorite guys I uh, like to block was probably – let me think about that for a second. Hmm. You know, Vito was a good one in Kansas City just because he was a vet. He knew how to play the game uh, professionally. He wasn't, uh, you know, never a trash talker, never a dirty guy, um, but always played uh, with extreme physicality and the way the game was supposed to be played. And I always um, respected him for that. You know, um, I can have respect for guys that's going to come in and play the game right the way it's supposed to. Um, and not be a dirty, cheap shot type of guy. You know, I will, I will forever love to play against guys like that, that, uh, you know, bring their lunch pail to work and don't complain and play with, play this game like it's supposed to be with uh, tenacity and uh, controlled aggression and, you know, uh, knew when to pull back. Um, you know, so I always, uh, he was always one of my favorite guys to play against. Not a very well-known guy. Um, he wasn't going to wow you with any of his um, physical ability, but he was a solid, decent player that, uh, you know, I respected a, a whole hell of a lot. Who was your least favorite to block against? Probably Richard Seymour. Richard Seymour in Oakland, um, you know, he was very good, very technically sound, but also had a um, – a nasty streak and I mean not nasty in a good way he was uh, you know he was always uh, um, a guy that would do something dirty if he had gotten blocked when he didn't want to just something along those lines that was very um, unprofessional and dirty um, so you know we, we make our living with our bodies so for you to try to hurt physically hurt somebody on purpose um, yeah, that's uh, it's not a way to play the game, and nor do I respect anybody like that. That's uh, you know, uh, it, that's what they're about. So, yeah. And plus, he ended up being a Raider, so that, that's that doesn't true. Too many brownie points either. So, that is very true. Right. 
All right, Jack, you got one more to wrap this one up, bud. One more. What was the greatest moment of your football career? Winning Super Bowl 50, uh, uh, of course. I mean, that's, that's pretty given. Um, the only one that would probably come second is the year I became first team all pro. Um, but yeah, uh, winning Super Bowl 50 is my all time best achievement. All right. Awesome. Well, Lewis, hey, we, we, know you, we know you have a lot going on, but we greatly appreciate you taking the time out to uh, meet with us. Uh, we wanted to make sure we got you on this show at some point just because of the uh, connections with Texas Tech and Denver Broncos. You know, it was just a perfect fit uh, to try to get you on the show. So we greatly appreciate you coming on. So. Oh, sit. Hold on, sorry. Say that again. I Sorry, said we just I'm... appreciate you taking the time, you know, to come on with us, you know, being a Absolutely. Red Raider and a Bronco. So, <laughs> my pleasure. Anytime, uh, you know, after in the next couple of weeks, things will slow down with, for me. So, um, hopefully, we can uh, we can get to get a chance to do this again uh, without as many distractions. And uh, and I apologize for that. It's just that uh, we're under a time crunch right now, and. Uh, so in a couple of weeks, uh, feel free to reach back out, and uh, I would love to do this again. I had a yeah, good time. We'll def- yeah, we definitely want to talk uh, Texas Tech football. Sonny can be back uh, running the offense. So, uh, you know, to wrap this out, let's, uh, let's throw those guns up there. All right. Guns up. Guns up. Luis Vasquez, thank you so much for uh, joining us here on the Paradox of Sports. Big Daddy's Auto, where we're big on customer service, big on savings, big on financing, and really big on finding the right vehicle for you. Because at Big Daddy's Auto, it's all about you and our big, easy, hassle-free deals. Find your ride at Big Daddy's Auto. All right, thanks. Louis Vasquez taking some time out there. I don't know which uh, major interstate or road he was on, but it was cool. He took some time to chat. Uh People breaking into their busy days to chat with you, Jack. That's pretty cool. So we talked about him. He's a Red Raider, Red Raider alum. Is that where we're going to see you? Are you going to Texas Tech or what are your college plans right now? I have no idea where I'm going to go to college. Probably all I'm looking for is low taxes. Well, Texas is low taxes, man. Texas is. Yeah, you're going to have to dang sure get out of Colorado, uh, University of Wyoming, maybe uh florida maybe uh, somewhere where i texas. can play like baseball or football ah uh, texas dude that's where you want to go texas mm-hmm. tech didn't mahomes pitch at tech no he he pitched his dad had pitched in the mlb oh but mahomes didn't pitch in college no oh okay just football okay yeah, i thought he, i a, thought he played them both they have a better baseball team than football team just saying oh really okay yeah. Well, there you Their go. Their football team isn't that good right now, while they have a pretty good baseball team. Nice. Well, there you go. There you be Red Raider down there. We'll come down there and I'll watch you do some uh, – come down to Lubbock, watch you play some baseball. Did you see the tornadoes uh, north of Lubbock like two days ago? No. Holy hell, you ought to look that up. Uh, north uh, – was it Happy? I think it was in Happy, Texas or something like that. It's one of those big – you know how some tornadoes are like a little skinny – Little, like, little skinny noodle-looking ones. This was a big old fat wedge tornado just sitting out there in some volunteer wheat pasture just to spin in. So, yeah, that's – you can go down there. You can have all that. By the way, that um, that was 10 sec- – that's 10-second scouting with Jack. Okay, 10-second scouting with Jack right there. Okay, let's do a little more than 10 second scouting. Let's do some bracketology. So, NCAA tournament is set. The brackets are ready. Uh, we may or may not have moved a little money back to the FanDuel account to make some parlays starting Thursday. Uh, we don't want to let the uh, boss lady know about that, but uh, <laughs> might be something we're going to try. So, where do you want to start? West, East, Midwest, or South? West. Where are we starting? Okay, so we're going to start out West. I'm just going to read through them, stop to bottom. We're just going to burn through them. So obviously I think we're going to move Gonzaga on, right? Yeah. Okay. Oklahoma. I'm like making a new bracket as we go. Okay. Uh, Oklahoma, Missouri. Here I got Oklahoma. Okay. I got Missouri. Creighton and UCSB. 
Here I got Creighton. Okay, I got UCSB. I watched Creighton the other day. They got smoked. Hold so up, I'm going hold with up. The University I'm of California, Santa Barbara. My picks, uh, okay. I'm actually gonna go Missouri, and then I'm act, and then I'm gonna stay Creighton. Okay, that's fine. Virginia, Ohio. Uh, I got Virginia. USC, and then uh, Wichita State or Drake. I got Wichita State or Drake. Same with me. I actually bring I, I bring Wichita State out a bit. Uh, Kansas or Eastern Washington? Kansas. Same. Oregon VCU. Uh, VCU. Okay, I got Oregon. Iowa and Grand Canyon. I think we both agree we're going to bring Iowa out there. Yeah. Okay, so then let's go back to the top of this round. In this, do you want to stay in the West and go all the way to the West no, of the Final Four? Yeah, okay, go Gonzaga, Missouri. I'm going to bring the Zags out to the Sweet 16. Yeah, I'm bringing their t them too. Okay, uh, Santa Barbara or Virginia, I'm bringing Virginia out. Oh, you mean uh, I got Creighton going over Virginia. Okay, so you're bringing Creighton out to the Sweet 16. Okay, uh, Wichita State and Kansas, I'm going to bring out Kansas. I'm going to Pre bring out Wichita State. Wow, big upset there. Bringing Wichita State out to the Sweet 16. Iowa and Oregon, I bring out Iowa. I bring out Iowa as well. Okay, so I have uh, Gonzaga, Virginia, Kansas, Iowa in my Sweet 16. So I have Gonzaga beating Virginia. Who do you have? I have Gonzaga beating Creighton. And Kansas and Iowa, I bring out Iowa. So my Elite Eight is uh, Gonzaga and Iowa. I actually bring out Wichita State and Drake. I think this is going to be another one of those big surprises. Say that again. I'm bringing Wichita State and Drake out. To the Elite Eight? Dang, look at you go, man. Okay. And, and then, they uh, win in overtime against Iowa. Who does? Drake? Or Wichita State or Drake. Okay, More than so like who, Wichita State right now. Because who, Drake's just the play-in. Who do you bring out to your who final do you four? bring out to your final four? Gonzaga. Okay. Now, so where do we go next? Oh, let's go east. east. Okay, so the east, Michigan. I assume we're gonna we're gonna both bring Michigan out. Yes. Saint Bonaventure or LSU? I got Saint Bonaventure. Same. Colorado and Georgetown. I got Colorado. Me too. And a lot of people are talking about Georgetown pulling the upset. I think I think, and I hate I hate CU. Hate them. The same for but, me. The only time and, I root for CU is when they're playing Nebraska. Exactly. Same. Uh, I think CU drills Georgetown. It's not, this isn't Allen Iverson, Georgetown, or, you know, Patrick, Patrick Ewing, Georgetown. Ewing, Georgetown. Yeah, this is just this year's Georgetown. I got CU coming out. Now, Brigham Young and the winner of that MSU to UCLA game. I brought out Brigham Young. Oh, you skipped to FSU and. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, Florida or uh, UNC. I got Florida. Yeah, I'm bringing out Florida as well. Okay, and then after that, we got Brigham Young or uh, UCLA MSU. I am bringing out Brigham Young. Me too. Now, here's an upset I'm picking. I pick Abilene Christian to upset Texas that first round. Nah, no, you're I'm saying go, I'm crazy. Yeah, I'm kind of okay. saying you're crazy. I hate Texas. I can't pick them. I refuse I, to choose I know, them. but then again, they've got I know. pretty good. So I'm not picking with, I'm picking with my heart, not my head. So then uh, Connecticut and Maryland, I pick Maryland. I'm picking Connecticut. Okay. And then Alabama, Iona, I got Iona. Or I'm sorry, I got Alabama. <laughs> yeah, I got uh -huh. Alabama. And one in the CBS bracket that I did for like, for a uh, prize pool uh, with my dad's friend, I chose Iona to beat Alabama. Okay, they might, dude. I don't know what's going to happen. That's because they're under new head coach Rick Pitino, and they've got some pretty good seniors to score. But yeah. right now, I'm just going to go Alabama. Gotcha. Not risk anything. So back to the top, Michigan, St. Bonaventure. I'm bringing out Michigan. I'm bringing out Michigan as well. But what it's going to be close. What about the Buffaloes and the Seminoles? I got the Seminoles. Okay, I bring out Colorado one more game. <laughs> And then Brigham Young and Abilene, I bring out BYU. I'll bring out Texas over BYU. Okay. And then uh, Maryland, Bama, I bring out Bama. I bring out Connecticut. Okay. So uh, Michigan, Colorado, I got Michigan going to the Elite Eight. 
I got Michigan going to the Elite as well over FSU. Okay, and then who do you have Michigan playing? I have Michigan playing Texas. Okay, I have Michigan playing BYU, and I have Michigan beating them and moving to the Final Four. And I have Texas beating Michigan. So you have Texas playing Gonzaga in the Final Four on that side of the bracket? Yeah. Okay, where do we go next, South or Midwest? How about let's just get this first Final Four matchup out of the way. Okay, so who do you got now? So I got the Zags in Michigan. You got got the Zags in Texas, correct? Yeah. So who do you have playing for it all? Uh, Zag. Okay. I got Michigan. I, I pick Michigan. I'll, I'll let a little spoiler alert. I have Michigan winning the whole thing. I just, I just, and I, again, not a big fan of them growing up with my brother. Uh, he was a Michigan guy. I was more of a Carolina guy, but I just, the job Jawan Howard's doing and Michigan just, Michigan is salty, man. They are tough. So let's go uh, south now. Okay. We'll head to the south. Uh, I think Baylor beats Hartford. Yes, they do. What about that Carolina Badgers uh, game? Who you got? I got Badgers. So do I. I beat uh, Wisconsin over North Carolina. Uh, Villanova and Winthrop. I got Villanova. As do I. Villanova and then Purdue, North Texas. I got Purdue. Okay. As do I. Texas Tech, Utah State. Utah State winning in overtime. Okay, I, I, I'm sorry. I, well, no, I know, and I, I stared at this a lot, but I, I do pick Texas Tech. I think it's going to be close, but I think Tech beats them by a bucket. So, uh, Arkansas Colgate, this is an upset I'm picking. I think Colgate beats Arkansas. I think it's going to be really, really close, but Arkansas beats Colgate. Okay. Uh, Florida and Virginia Tech. I got Virginia Tech. Okay, so you got Va Tech. Uh, Ohio State and Oral Roberts. Who you got? We got to go Ohio I, State, right? Yeah, I'm going Ohio State. Okay, so back to I'd the be top. Tripping if I go 15, be there. just tripping. So we <laughs> both got Baylor, Wisconsin in that second round. I I think Baylor goes to the Sweet 16. Same for me. Okay, and then Villanova, Purdue. I bring out Villanova. I bring out Purdue. Okay, different there. Texas Tech and Colgate. You got Utah State and Arkansas, I believe. Mm-hmm. I'm so, bringing out Arkansas. So you're bringing out Arkansas and then Vautech, Ohio State. I bring out Ohio State. Mm, Vautech, Ohio State. I bring out Vautech. Wow. So you got Arkansas or, oh, well, let's go back to the top. So Baylor, Villanova. I bring Baylor out to the Elite Eight. Baylor, Purdue. I bring out Baylor to the Elite Eight. Gotcha. And then I have Texas Tech and Ohio State and I bring out Ohio State. Who did you have there? I have Arkansas going over Vautech. So you have Arkansas beating Vautech in the Sweet 16 to go to the Elite Eight. Mm-hmm. And then uh, I have Baylor beat, or I'm sorry, I have Ohio State beating Baylor. So I have Ohio State in my Final Four on the South. I have Baylor in my Final Four over Arkansas. Right on. I don't think that's a bad, that's not a bad pick either. So let's go to the Midwest. Illinois and Drexel. I think we both bring out Illinois, I would assume. Yeah. Uh, Loyola, Chicago, and Georgia Tech. I got Loyola. I got Loyola, Chicago. Got no, say- the final four run they made in 2018 was amazing. Yeah, yep. And they, That they- was with my heart. That pick was with my heart. Yeah, me too. Uh, Tennessee, Oregon State. I'm going to go with Tennessee. I'm going with Tennessee too over Oregon State. Oklahoma State and Liberty. I got the uh, Cowboys. I got th- me too, me too. Okay, San Diego State and Syracuse. I'm going to stick Mountain West there and I'll go San Diego State, even though I am a big fan of Syracuse. Same for me. Uh, West Virginia and Moorhead State. I'm going to say West Virginia. West Virginia scores 100 points. Okay, Clemson, Rutgers. Let's go uh, Clemson. I'm going Rutgers. Okay, and then Houston, Cleveland State. I got Houston. I got Houston scoring 100 points. Gotcha. Okay, so back to the second round. Illinois and Loyola. I got Illinois coming out. I got Illinois. And then Tennessee, but Oklahoma. That's, okay. But that's in overtime. Overtime, okay. Tennessee, Oklahoma State. I bring out Oklahoma State. Same for me. San Diego, West Virginia. I'm bringing out San Diego. I'm bringing out West Virginia. Oh, okay. So you got West Virginia moving on. And then Clemson, Houston. I bring out Houston. I bring out Houston as well. Okay. So we both do we both have Illinois, Oklahoma State? Mm-hmm. Yes, we do. Uh, Illinois, 
So we bring out and then uh, I have San Diego Wait. State, Houston. What? Okay. Never mind. I got Oklahoma State going over Illinois. Oh, okay. So you brought Oklahoma State out to the Elite Eight. So mm-hmm. Illinois and then Oklahoma State. And then what about San Diego and Houston is who I have? I got I have, Houston over West Virginia. And I got Houston over San Diego State. So I have Illinois and Houston in the Midwest, and I pick Houston to my final four. I pick Houston to my final four as well over Oklahoma State. Okay, so I have then in my final four there, I have Ohio State against Houston, and I have Houston in the national championship game. In the final four, I have Baylor versus Houston and Houston in the national championship game. So just to re- recap, our final four, my final four is Gonzaga, Michigan, Ohio State, Houston. And yours is what? Gonzaga, Texas, Baylor, Houston. And you have Gonzaga and Houston in the national championship game? Yes. And you have Gonzaga winning? No, I don't. I have Houston you have, winning. You have Houston winning the whole tournament. Yeah. Nice. That's that's not a bad pick, man. That's not a bad pick at all. It's going to be the... Uh, it's going to be very close, but Houston's going to pull it out to get the dub. Dude, I hope you, I hope you hit it. That'll be really cool if you pick that out right there. And yeah, if I go perfect, I, or if I get it, or I'm going to pick the final score. How about this calls for NCA against him? Yep, you better pull it up. Pull up that game, Sim. All right. All right. Let's go. Ah, I can't click. College basketball. I'm going to go. How about I'm just going to go Gonzaga at home. But I'm going to turn off home field advantage. Okay. And then I've got Houston away. Hold up. I have serious lag. Submit. Hold up. It's going to take a while to get one that predicts. Houston winning. Okay, I got it. 86 to 80 Houston. 86 to what? 80. Okay. I sat down. We got it. All right. Okay. Yeah, and submit my picks. Hold up, Do I'm it. submitting. I shall submit. All right. I picked Houston to cut down the nets in Indianapolis. Beautiful. Okay. Oh, it's yeah, a solid episode. Way, in that, yes. yes. And by the way, in that CBS bracket, I picked another 15 to beat it to. Not Ooh. just Iona. I think it was. Uh, let me figure out which one it was. I think it was Oral Roberts. I'm not sure. Okay. I I, I don't know. I'm going to be anxious to see what this, all these games being played right around Indianapolis and not a lot of crowd and stuff like it's, I'm kind of, I'm kind of anxious to see how it goes. So we will, uh, this good episode, man. We got a little football. I guess we'll see maybe by next episode, we should know where Deshaun Watson's playing. Maybe the Denver will have a new quarterback. Uh, and I bet my bracket will change uh, once all of the what's them face games be finished. The first four games. Yeah. The bracket is subject to change. Subject to change. So uh, we'll, we'll get something done either tomorrow night or Thursday. Before it actually starts, we'll put something on the Facebook page to show you and I's official brackets. So does that sound good? All right. Okay. It's time for that outro. I'm getting in a really good bracket. That's it for this week's edition of Paradox of Sports Podcast. Be sure to like and subscribe to us on Twitter and, I mean, on YouTube and uh, follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Be sure to have a good day. See you guys next week on the Paradox of Sports Podcast. Bye.